Well, good morning and welcome to Morning at NTV. My name is Idris Matu and this is Everyday Life. Now, today is Tuesday and you know what that means is Money Tuesdays. We talk financial literacy. We've been having several topics uh, for the f last few weeks. We've talked about investment clubs. Last week we talked about loans. And today we are talking about investment. When should you invest? How should you invest? And do you have to invest? Well, in studios, as usual, I have Ronald Mukasa. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Well, again, uh, investment. What is investment? I think, uh, I, think, I think when we reflect on this word investment, uh, quite simply it is someone putting away money, mm. investing it in something, hoping that he will get a profit. Mm. So the objective of investment is actually to get a profit. It is... I will put money in this uh, in this business. I'll mm. put money in this piece of land. I'll put money in this stock, mm. and my hope is that the return on it will be able to give me a profit, and that profit is the reason why I will deny myself consuming this money now mm. in the hope of a future uh, return. Because most times when we are uh, talking to our elders and mm. some of these CEOs, they tell you, you should invest, you should mm. invest, you should invest. Mm. But what are the keywords from what you are describing investment as? Mm. Uh, I've highlighted income mm -hmm. and profit. Yes. So whenever I am about to invest, mm. I should look out for income and profit. Why? Exactly. Because you are not putting away your money on a casual basis. Mm. You want to make sure that you return something from the money. Mm. Now, when I put away money, I, I am hoping that when I put in this three million, mm. after a year, I expect that this three million has grown to possibly 3.5 million. Mm. And that five, 500,000 is the return which I will get. Mm. Now, the reason why you need to invest now is because in December, the only way you can enjoy the return is it actually if you planted today. So you mm. can't harvest fruits from this tree of investment mm. unless you planted. So if I plant in January, I hope that by the end of the year, my investment has grown and I can be able to harvest the fruits. The problem is that sometimes people want to harvest the fruits immediately. <laughs> they don't want to let that to tree wait. grow. Yeah. And, that, and, and uh, when you think about investment, there is a factor of time. It is that it usually doesn't happen immediately. Mm. It takes a bit of time. Some investments will take a year. Some investments will take five years. Some investments will take 10 years. And it's important that you, the investor, you are patient enough during this time. Mm. You can't keep demanding this tree which is growing for fruits. Mm. And that's what the problem. Someone starts a business and before it has had the capacity to grow, he's saying, but why am I not harvesting? This mm. tree is not growing fast enough. And that causes him a problem because many times he says let me just eat the tree mm. and that is eating the capital of the business instead of, of being waiting. able instead of waiting for it to yeah. grow because mm. now the challenge is whenever mm. uh, most people invest mm. i might want to get some income i mm. don't have a job exactly. probably i have a job that does not give me enough money mm. and i am investing so that i get an extra income yes why should i wait for mm. this business the business to uh, give me profit over a year mm. three years is that a bad investment? Should mm. I call that a bad investment if it's mm. not giving me profit as quick as I expected? I think any investment you go into, you can anticipate how it will perform. Mm. So, for example, uh, you will say you want to, let's say, uh, raise chicken. If you want to raise chicken, we know that chicken mm. possibly will take three months. If there are layers, they may take a little longer, possibly six months. So that means that if you have gone into layers, you need to anticipate that for the first six to eight months, mm. I don't expect a return. And it is important to know that from the onset. You can't be disappointed in the third month that the chicken haven't started laying. They will start at the point when they need to what? When they need to start. So you need to make sure that this is part of your of, of part of your process. You don't you don't demand the investment to return immediately. For example, if you have even started a retail shop, people need to get to know you. You need to grow a customer <coughs> base. And that process of growing a customer base may ha include you advertising. Advertising, in this case, may it mean walking around uh, your village and telling them that friends... I have this shop, I need to, I can do this service for you, I can give you these products. Now, that process there demands that you are 
patient. Mm. And that patient is usually where, and that means that it has to come in the planning phase. Do I have enough capital to push me through? So you don't, for example, I mean, if I uh, give an example of chicken, you have to have the feeds to actually make sure to that these chicken are eating during this period. Because if they don't feed, they won't be able to give you the egg mm. later. So you need to make sure that the feeding process has been done. Well, what I'm getting from you is that mm. before investment, you mm. have to do a lot of uh, things like research and, and making sure that the business you're investing in mm. is uh, profitable, yes. number one. But before we go into mm. when mm. I should invest, mm. uh, I know today we are talking about financial investment. Mm. Yes. But so many people would ask themselves, uh, if I'm going to go back to school. Mm. For example, I have a degree, but I want mm. a master's. Mm. I want to go back to school and probably get that master's in uh, business administration or whatever sector that mm. I belong. Is that investment? I think, I think or is investment only uh, limited to mm. financial? I think, I think there, there are many, there are many, the, the, the investment is an entire, the word can be used for investing time in your family. Spending mm. time with your children is mm. an investment. Mm. And that creates a good relationship which can sustain you through the rest of your life. There is investing in your health, uh, making sure that you're in good, so that when you hit the gym each day, mm. you are trying to make sure that you have you invested. Six packs. Yes, <laughs> and that's an investment you yes. have made. And even education can be an investment. And actually, education can be converted into a financial mm. investment. Sometimes in your workplace, being able to upgrade your education level may actually be able to push your income up mm. and that would be a worthwhile investment sometimes you are in a profession where you need to constantly keep learning mm. to remain relevant and i mean i imagine in the i mean in the knowledge age that we are in the moment you are not learning continuously you will become irrelevant to your employer. So you need to keep investing in yourself to learn, to be able to remain relevant to your employer. But I mean, if we specifically talk about uh, financial investment, it is that process of just putting money aside and mm. making sure that you can be able to get a profit and an income from it. Well, mm. at least right about now, we mm. know what investment is. Mm. The key words are income, profit. Mm. You get your money, you put it somewhere in a business, mm. in a cafeteria, in a boda boda. Mm. You expect to get income and also profit. Now, Mr. Ronald, mm. I get to the question of when should I invest? Because probably mm -hmm. I've just started my job mm -hmm. uh, after three months, after a year, after two years. Mm -hmm. When should I invest? I think, I think that's, that, that's a brilliant question. Uh, one of the things which we need to be careful about is this temptation to believe that there will be a point when I'm more ready to invest. The, 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 there is that temptation. So people <laughs> you, keep you, saying you, that... You, you remind mm -hmm. me of the, um, mm -hmm. some conversation mm -hmm. I had with a few friends of mm -hmm. mine uh, they ask you, when are you getting married? Mm. Yes, when are you getting married? Mm. They're like, no, no, I'm not ready. Let me mm. first get ready. So yes. <laughs> No, it is something which has to, it, it, it has to, it, it has to happen. Yes. And you, uh, so the, w when you think about investment, that, that's how you should reflect on it. Mm. It isn't a question of how ready you are yeah. or whether it is part of your financial cocktail. And, uh, and let me explain it like this. You could uh, use the example of having a balanced diet. Mm. When someone is, um, when you, they, they tell us that, uh, you are supposed to have a meal which has proteins, which mm. has carbohydrates, yeah. which has vitamins, <laughs> which has minerals, which has fats. All these things are important for you to be healthy. So that means that if I have a meal mm. which doesn't, is not composed of all those things, I won't be healthy. Now when you think about money, it is also similar. You are supposed to make money. You are supposed to spend money. Mm. You are supposed to save money. You are supposed to invest money. You may be supposed to actually give money. The what we give in, a, uh, in, a, in, our, in our religious organizations yes. and whichever causes we give to. So all these five are part of the cocktail of money. Mm. Now what we suffer from is many of us may do only two of those things. We make money and we what? Spend and it. we spend it. Now that is an equivalent of saying I will only eat fat and proteins. And that is not a healthy meal. So our financial health is suffering because we are not having a balanced diet. So every time you are making money, a bit of that money, even though it's 100,000, mm. a bit of that money should be 
uh, should be spent. Mm -hmm. A bit of that money should, should be, be saved. saved. Uh, that savings should be invested, invested. And a bit of that money should be given. So all so those are part of the you cocktail. Say, you say a, a bit of money that I have saved should mm -hmm. be invested. Exactly. Does that mean I can only invest money that I've saved? When you think about the money you have, you mm -hmm. are going to invest money which you have saved because that is just a side of a coin. When I save it, I invest it. Mm -hmm. But you can also come and borrow money from me mm -hmm. and invest it. Now, when you borrow someone else's money to invest, mm -hmm. he's not going to give it to you for free. So That's when you borrow interest. from me, there Something will be an interest. Exactly. Mm. So there will be an interest on that money. And when there is an interest of that money, you need to ask yourself, this profit which we under anticipate from this investment, will it be sufficient to actually cover mm. the interest which I have to pay on the loan? Mm. Mm. So um, something important is research. Mm. For example, uh, I mean media. Mm. Can I simply invest in another sector that I don't know anything about? Mm. Probably food. Mm. Is that okay? Is, is that an ideal situation for investment? Mm. I, think, I think it's absolutely okay to invest uh, in, in any sector which can give you a good return. That's mm. absolutely okay. But you make a very good point when you mention the word research. The process of seeking for information. You have to first of all ask yourself, do I understand this industry mm. which I am entering in. Understanding this industry is absolutely important because if you don't understand the industry you are entering, you may be just taking a chance and walking in the dark. And that is the trouble which, uh, which we have. Many times you find that people have invested after having a drink with a friend mm. and the friend told him you can't believe how profitable border borders <laughs> are. Border <laughs> borders are good. You just put in four million and it then we, they you will don't bring, know where yes. you are making money. And there think, is a eh? lot of excitement yeah, and yeah, amidst yeah. the They're drinks like, and ah, the can't take him. tomorrow morning you are out and you pick five million from your account, buy your first border, even sometimes borrow mm. and you buy it. I say don't worry, they just send you mobile money. Mm. Just send it on your phone and within three months your money has what? has returned. Now that is not the process. Mm. You have to ask yourself, this person who told me about a border border, who is riding mm. his yeah, border yeah, border? Yeah. It's possibly his brother who is riding it and he lives in the same household, yeah, yeah. which makes supervision then, very simple. simple. Yeah. So you get someone else who you can't supervise yeah. and your investment. Then you have to ask yourself, where exactly are they located? Mm. How do they ensure that money keeps coming. What is the border border he has? Has he bought a boxer? Has he bought a... Which, which, which border border is he right Works better. Which, which works better. The, those are the questions you, you have to, to ask yourself. yourself. Yes. Well, uh, the lines are open. You can call in and ask our financial literacy coach, mm. Mr. Ronald Bukasa, about investment. When mm. should you invest? What should you invest? And mm. how should you invest? Mm. The lines are open. You can call in. And uh, mm. going back to you, Mr. Mm. <coughs> Ronald. If I'm to outline a few mm. things that I should tick off, mm. probably my bucket list mm. before investment, mm. uh, one thing is research. Exactly. Two, you talked about having the money exactly. and preferably not getting a loan. Exactly. Money Especially when you are starting out, mm. it's better you start with your With savings. your money, money that mm. probably you have saved, exactly. money th that you have inherited. Exactly. Yeah, it's your, mm. it's your money. Mm. Uh, maybe a lottery. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> What other things should I tick off my list? I think one thing which is absolutely important is to know where you want your investment to go. It's absolutely to know what the goal is, what's the objective of the investment. Mm. Why am I going into this business? Many people enter business with the simple goal of making money, but mm. even making money is not a clear goal. How much money is it you want to make? Mm. Well, how long do you want to make this money? What kind of period are you looking at? And why this is absolutely important is if you start an investment mm. without knowing <clears throat> exactly where you want to go, chances are that you don't know whether you want to spend a specific amount of time in mm. it or you don't. So I'll give you an example. If you went to the taxi park, for example, and the first question which you will be asked is, 
where are you going? Mm. So you can't go to the taxi park and you don't know where you are where going. Where you going? Because yeah, but you, then you just there you <laughs> jump onto any, any any you will jump onto a taxi to Jinja, mm. you will jump onto a taxi to Gulu. And now the question is that if you go to the park without knowing where you are going, you have a big problem because you can't put a finger on your direction. And you find that in our investment life, most of us are like that. After you have started the border border, the next day you have started chicken, the next day you have mm. crossed over to cryptocurrency. The next day, and then you, you ask yourself, yes. hey, Banange, me, I'm doing businesses, exactly. nothing is coming out. Vandoga, exactly, Vandoga. Mm. you can give all kinds of reasons, but the question is, ask yourself, have very clear objectives. That the truth is, I want to invest in trees, for example. If you're investing in trees, it means that you're talking about 10 to 15 years, mm. and you need to be careful about that. If it's 10 to 15 years, I need to get the land because it's better you own land if it's that long term instead of you renting know, the land. Setting mm. financial goals. Is, is one important thing and yes. how much money do I want to make exactly it brings me to a common uh, mm. scenario whereby you get a job mm -hmm. uh, you go to the maybe HR office and they mm. ask you how much do you expect to earn say anything. so many Just people say anything, anything. anything. yes anything mm. but does that mean that in every financial transaction that we make mm. either it's expenditure mm. either it's uh, income we should set certain goals for a certain period of time. Mm, mm. Exactly. Because if you don't do that, chances are very high that the person who knows clearly where he's going. I mean, you think, uh, think about when you go to your HR manager. Mm. Your HR manager knows what he wants to give you. You don't know what you want mm. to have. Who do you think is going to win that conversation? The HR manager. The HR manager is going mm. to win because him is certain about what he wants to mm. give. So the, the moment you have certainty, it helps you throw away some things which may not be relevant in your journey. Mm. So someone should come to you and tell you that, by the way, have you heard there is a lot of profit in buying produce? Mm. And you, qui you quietly say that, you know what, I am concentrating on my media business which I have started. And that's mm. where I want to be. I know there is money on the account, on mm. my photography business, mm. but I'm not going to take it and buy produce because produce isn't what I am in. I am in this photography business. I want to buy a new camera. I want to, so that you need to, if you are uncertain about where you are going, chances are that you'll be diverted on your journey. When I'm setting goals mm. for uh, my financial investment, and mm. uh, I've said I need to earn this kind of money, mm from this business yes uh, does time also apply exactly exactly and you you need to especially when you think about it from your personal income uh, level when you are starting uh, when you are starting out uh, making an investment say in a business mm. you need to ask yourself what kind of income flows am i looking at i'll give you an example if you invest in trees mm. you don't expect to have a cash flow from trees you you have to quickly appreciate that trees are going to take a bit of time before they actually grow. And it's not a bad thing. Mm. It is okay. <coughs> but you have to ask yourself, if I've taken half of the family money mm. and put it in trees, how will I feed my family on a daily basis? Well, I think we do have a caller. Hello. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning, madam. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Chengara. I'm called Judith Ndagano. Mm. Yes, Judith. What's your question? Yes, um, uh, thank you for this program. Mm. Yes, Judith, you're welcome. Hello? Oh, I thought, mm. I think we dropped the call. So, mm. we were talking about the bucket list mm. of when you should invest. Mm. And one, the first thing was mm. research. Mm. Second was uh, having the money mm. and uh, preferably not having to get a loan. Mm. Uh, third is setting the goals, mm, yes. knowing how much do I want to make, mm. when do I want to make. Exactly. Yeah. What is the fourth, if there is a fourth? I think, I think one of the things which you also need to reflect on on your investment journey is as you are thinking about exactly where I'm going, you need to go a bit further mm. beyond setting the goals and draw kind of a roadmap where am I going to pass and exactly where am I going to start? And this mm. is a big problem. Many times we have these big goals which we have set out, and the goals are gigantic, and mm. it appears that they are powerful goals. So mm. you ask yourself, where am I going to start? How can I start with what I have to be able to achieve those goals? Well, I think we do have a caller. Hello. 
So oh. it does. Mm. Sadly, sadly. Well, we are talking about investment, how you should invest, when should you invest, and what should you invest in. And today is Tuesday, money, money Tuesdays, when we talk about financial literacy. And we've been talking about this for the last two weeks, and we shall continue giving you financial literacy for the next few weeks or few months mm. now. We were still talking about the bucket list. We had covered mm. research. We had covered having the money, setting the goals. Mm. Do we have a caller? Hello? Hello? All right. So setting the goals, mm. having, knowing when you should get this amount of money and what kind of money exactly. that you need. Mm. And the fourth was? So we're talking about the roadmap. After you know where you want to go, mm. you need to kind of pave a way to get there. Yeah. Now, usually that's where the problem is. I want to start a hardware store which gives me 10 million shillings mm. every month. Mm. The big question is where do I start now? How do I move from the point of having just 2 million shillings mm. to a hardware store which is that big? Mm. Now, that is the roadmap. It is saying, I am going here. What path can I take? Starting from exactly where you are. Because many t times people are stuck with very big goals, but they are not moving towards them. Mm. The goals are big, ambitious goals, <coughs> but we don't see a clear path of mm. how do you start now? How do you start with available resources? Mm. How do you start with what you have around you? So when you're doing the research, it's yes. not only about the business, knowing what kind of business this exactly. is and how can I make money out mm. of this. It's also planning out your roadmap and knowing that this is how I'm going to drive the business exactly. until this point. Exactly. Okay. So I mean, I want to start, uh, you say, you know what, the business I want to start, I want to start a photography uh, studio. Mm. Now, a photography studio is a good idea, but chances are that all you have is a camera. Mm. So the question is, can you start by looking after your friends, taking a couple of weddings? Hello. Mm. I think we do have a caller. Hello? Hello? Sadly, I think we have a problem with our mm. lines, but continue, continue trying to call. Mm. Uh, you'll get a chance to ask about investment, what you should invest, how should you invest, and when should you invest. Mm. So the roadmap. Yes. So you, you, yes. You, th that's exactly the point. You have to ask yourself, how do I start with what I have? Mm. All I have is a camera, but I want a big studio with lights and everything. Mm. How do I start with my camera? It's possibly starting with your immediate network, looking at your friends and telling them, you know what, I am doing this business. Mm. I can do your birthday party. I can do your, 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 your uh, possibly a wedding may mm. be very big, but a birthday party, baby you shower. Can, a baby shower. Bachelor's yes, party. Exactly, <laughs> bachelor's party. Yeah. So you do a bit of that, but you have to notice that this is part of a grander scheme to mm. actually get to that destination. Mm. So I know my destination, and then I start with what is available to me. Mm. And many people are stuck in that process of not getting through to starting. So they will, they want to get to their dreams and every time you talk to them, they say, you know what, one of these days I am going to own a, a bus company. There will be buses. Well, uh, mm. now, Mr. Ronald, um, you know, we've learned what mm. an investment is, mm. when I should invest, mm. but people exist with money mm. and they don't know where to mm. invest. Mm. Does that go back to research? Exactly. Where to invest, one of the things which we need to look at when you think about where you want to invest, there are various vehicles. Mm. Some people put their money in treasury bills and bonds. Some people put their money in the stock exchange, the Uganda stock exchange. Some people put their money in real estate. Mm. Some people will go outright and they will start businesses. Mm. Sometimes you will do a partnership with someone. So all these are business. They are all vehicles which you can use to invest. But mm. when you think about where to invest, always stick to what you call the, 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 the things which you fully understand. Invest mm. in what you understand. Many times someone who understands a specific investment, I mean, you understand a lot about media, mm. but possibly I don't. And I need to be careful as I plan to invest in the media. Do I have a partner mm. who fully understands where we are going? Because what you want to do is to make sure when you put your money down, certainly there is risk. But why we talk about calculated risk is 
Calculating risk is the <coughs> process of reducing risk, the process of understanding that there is risk. There is that if I go and approach this woman, exactly. she might slap me. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that, so that, when that she is, does, uh, you don't shock. Yes, at least you want to say you have managed the process. Mm. You want to ask yourself, how should I approach? How should I approach this opportunity? Mm. So every opportunity you approach, you need to ask yourself, have you done enough homework? Now, but there is also a problem where people do too much homework. Hey, Someone I, has I, been I, doing homework for the <laughs> last five years. They are researching and, and researching it mm. and researching it. You need to get, because the word is calculated risk. That means the risk still exists. Yes. At, at the point of entry, there will still be risk that you could actually mm. make a what? A wrong investment. So you need to balance the two. There is a very big problem, especially with people. You find someone saying, I am still researching. They have about five business proposals mm. on, their, mm. on their computer. They have researched it, they have talked to everyone, and now they has begun to say, even 2018, I will keep researching mm. it. And all the way from 2010, you have been researching the same thing. So, you know, from what you're saying, mm. I get the feeling that whenever you have an idea, mm. don't sleep on it. Exactly. Be hasty. Exactly. To, you know, fulfill this dream, because mm. sometimes we have ideas. Mm. I had an idea when I was in primary, mm. but now you're 40 years old. Yeah, and the you're saying one of these days I will, the get, <laughs> I will get it done. Mm. Now, we talked about uh, calculating the risk mm. and mm. knowing your business and knowing the possibilities that maybe things will not work out. Mm. What if I lose my money? What exactly. do I do? Now, I think, I think one of the things which you need to appreciate, especially in the investment sphere, is the possibility of loss exists. Mm. You can manage it, but it doesn't go away. Mm. And loss is not necessarily a bad thing. Certainly, we all don't want to lose our money. Yes. But when you lose your money, it is also an opportunity to understand exactly how not to invest. Mm. So when you find someone who has possibly tried out with goats, and all the goats he fed them, everything went well, and suddenly they were hit by a certain disease, mm. and they all died. That person has an experience which you don't have. Now, experience, they say that losses are the school fees of business people. Mm. You are paying school fees. The question is, after paying those school fees, did you learn? Can you say oh, that you when you stayed the, uh, same, you stayed the same? So it is making sure you pick the lesson. Mm. Can you, do we want to, you need to be careful. Look out, ensure that you don't actually make a loss. Mm. But at the heart <laughs> of it, when you do, make sure at least you learn from it. All the people, successful investors, they have made some big blunders here and there. And when they make them, the one thing which they do that the rest of us don't is they quickly learn from them and they quickly recover from mm. them. There are people who spend so long talking about the loss which they make. Uh, you can't uh, believe what happened in 2005. Uh, I invested in this business. <laughs> I and lost this, this money. Thing and I all of it went. All yeah. of it went. Yeah. And we are in 2018. And the person 13 years on, he's still discussing that loss. The loss that and everyone who before. cares to listen, he sits down and he tells him, you know what, my friend, you can't believe hardware. Hardware is very bad business. Mm. Oh, you can't believe land. I because bought a of plot the prior of, uh, exactly. experience they had. I, I bought land and uh, they, it was in uh, power. Mm. I bought it and they t So you, you need to make sure, learn from that. If you had a land transaction which you made and indeed it went bad, mm. ask yourself, what didn't I do? Mm. Did I make the necessary checks? Did I make sure that I made the necessary follow-up? So at the next investment, you are wiser investment. You don't make use of that lesson if you sit by mm. and you actually say that, tell everyone about the loss, but never invest again. What I'm picking from what you're mm. saying is that when you try the first time, if mm. you fail the first exactly. trial, Get try up, again, try, try again, again, and exactly. try again and again and again and again. Exactly. But you know sometimes, mm. Ronald, that times you really feel uh -uh, I cannot do this mm, anymore. I've mm. saved up my let's say five million shillings. Mm. I've started up the business with three million Ugandan shillings. Yes. I've been using the two million. My savings are done, are mm. depleted. Mm. I've made losses. Exactly. What do I do then? Because I don't have any more money to invest. No, and I you're telling me when you fail, mm. try again. What am I going to use to try again? I think I think I think I think the process which you use to get the five million can mm. be used again to actually recapitalize mm. your business. Yeah. But what is key is that possibly the next trial may not even be your money. You mm. may be a man of experience now, and you get a partner, and you tell him, you know what, 
I have tried this thing. I know the mistakes I made. If we partner together, mm -hmm. we can actually be able to succeed. So one of the things which you need to be, which you need, the, the, the <coughs> biggest error which is made is many times we don't go deep enough. So just at the point when we are about to break through, we actually give up. Mm -hmm. So when you, you find so many people saying that, uh, you know what, I have, I have, I know this uh, clothes business, it is mm -hmm. very bad. I bought a whole in the water and the thing was, was bad. Mm -hmm. But then the question is, did you buy another one? If you didn't buy another one, you don't, you may never made use of the lessons which you had mm -hmm. initially. So you need to actually ask yourself, how can I do this differently? How can I do this wiser? Because that is the purpose mm -hmm. of failure. Failure is a learning process. It is used specifically to learn. Oh, well, mm -hmm. as we run out of time, mm -hmm. uh, a few things that we've learned today mm. uh, is what an investment is, yes. when should I invest, how mm. should I invest. And for me, what practically I've picked out is you have to do your research. Mm. You have to do your research, you have to Seek save your money. Seek information, yes. And you have to try again whenever yes. you fail. Mm. Mr. Ronald, as we wrap up, mm. any last few words? I think, I think at the heart of it, uh, I'll go back to that thing we mentioned at the beginning, is have a balanced financial diet. Mm. Make sure that you make money, Make sure that you spend some money. Mm. Make sure that you save some money. Make sure that you invest some money. Mm. Make sure that you also give. All these things should be part of your diet. The biggest error is many of us mm. spend a lot of time just making and spending. Mm. And we don't do enough investment. Because the purpose of investment is a day will come mm. when you can no longer make money. And you hope that your investments can be able to actually make that money Retirement. to keep you living. Oh, well, it has been a very mm. investful conversation. Mm. <laughs> but catch us next Tuesday. Mm. We shall be talking financial literacy every Tuesday on Everyday Life. Tune in and learn more on how to increase your income, save your money, take a loan. We've been talking about so many topics, and next week we shall be talking about another money topic. We've dubbed every Tuesday, Tuesday Money Tuesdays. So. Tune in, tune in, tune in, tune in, tune in. Now, uh, you can continue the conversation on our website, www.ntv.co.ug, or our Facebook page, which is NTV Uganda, and that is the same for Twitter, Instagram, and you can follow Morning at NTV at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Morning at NTV. Or you can follow me, Idris Matu. Idris Matu, which is spelled E D R I S M A T U, that is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Continue the conversation. Ask more about these things and tell me what do you need to see on the show. Now, up next is Mwasu Zemtia with Farida Nakazibwe. Don't miss that. Tune in and stay here at NTV Turning on Your World. Have a very good morning. Your wild and more. All you have to do is renew your monthly basic bouquet subscription of 18,000 shillings. Then enjoy three free days only on Star Times. Enjoy digital life.